And even Jesus, as we get ready to celebrate, even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. How many of you remember that story? And, uh, and the Bible said that as he sweat with, as it were, great drops of blood, he was experiencing, you see, he was very much God and he was very much man. And so the man side of him started thinking about all the suffering and all the torture and all the things that was ahead. And he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. Right? No one in their right mind wants to suffer. No one in their right mind just willingly wants adversity, right? You gotta be dumb to just, oh, bring it on. I'm just what I want in life. Right? It, it just happens organically and naturally along the way. Amen. And, and I'm gonna tell you something while we're at it. Don't pray for patience. Don't pray for what I'm telling you. Yes, sir. Patience is something that God gives you along the way. Because if you do, you're going to open up the floodgates of issues and problems in your life like you've never seen. Yes, sir. And so as we stand, I want you to stand with me as we begin to think about what Jesus endured in the garden. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And so on this resurrection service, I want you to lift your hand and I want you to just say, God, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. God, I may not like what I'm going through. I may not like what I'm experiencing. Things might not be the way I want it to be. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Worship him this morning. Worship him this morning. Let his will, let his will be done in your life. Let his will be done in your life. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to remain standing. Reverend Steele is going to lead us in one of those old-fashioned hymns that's relative to what is happening today. All right? God bless you. Amen. And turn to page 87 in your hymnal, if you'd like. Should be a red hymnal behind the pews. Some of them. Page 87. The old bloody cross.
see everybody. Amen. Sister April has got the children's church going on if you guys want to go up there. I see you got your little shoes on. And um, so, yeah, I don't know. You got they didn't want to go up to the children's church if you want to go up there. And, uh, but anyway, it's there, it's available to you if you want to go. But um, now I forgot what I was saying. When we moved here. Yeah, when we moved here, Almost seven years ago, I told my boss when I got here, he know the same company. I'm a pastor of a church. We have this and that and the other going on. And I let him know right up front. He had no problem with that because I told him up front what the deal was. Amen. Amen. Uh, on Wednesday night, we have church. And the weekend, we didn't have to worry about that. But on, on, on Wednesday night, we have church. I can't be working. This, I can't be working these amount of hours and that amount of hours and on and on and on. Why? Because God comes first. Amen. Now, do, I, do we have to work? Yes. Do we have to do other things? Yes. But God comes first. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? I say God comes Amen. first. Yes, and I promise you God will come first when you're laying in that casket. I guarantee you, you will. Oh, man, God is first. I promise you. Are you with me? I promise you that you will say to yourself well, on the other side, wherever you are, if you made it to heaven, you'll be saying, whew. <laughs> but if you, if you go to the other place, you're going to be saying, man, I, I slipped up. You, you know what I'm saying? I slipped up. And uh, you guys want to go to children's church? Hey, hey, God bless you. Be careful. Amen. Yeah, yeah, just watch the thing. This is, you know, this broadcasting and technology. We just got to, God bless the children. God bless you. You folks come on and make yourself at home. Amen. Amen. Just be patient with us. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. Amen. <laughs> we welcome you folks. We welcome you. Amen. Come on in. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God is good. Did you hear me? I said God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen. And what's the other part? All the time, God is good. I could be standing in this pulpit lost without God, and God is still good. Amen. Amen. God is good. And we welcome all of you. We thank you for being here. It's beautiful. And uh, we want you to make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. You're among friends. Yes. Amen. You don't have to feel like you're some stranger. Yes. This is the house of God. Amen. Amen. I said this is the house of God. Yes. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're yes. black. I don't yes. care if you're Asian. I don't I care. But you know what I'm <laughs> But when you when you when when you are a public speaker, you gotta be careful what you say. Because people take what you say literally. You say, I don't care if you did that. Oh, Pastor say. <laughs> they, they'll hear they, you know, they like they'll hear what they want to hear. Like, I hear, you know, I don't mean it like that. I'm saying something for emphasis. But no, you know, we hear what we want to hear, right? Uh, when we, when we, but anyway, I'm just saying it doesn't matter what your color is. Yes, amen. It doesn't matter. Oh, heaven you. doesn't have ghettos. Yes. Amen. amen. There's no ghettos in heaven. Uh -huh. Amen. It's all the same. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God we got to pay no light bills and gas bills. Yes. Right? Amen. Amen. I'm sick of that. Right. I'm sick of light bills, gas bills. I'm sick of that guy in my mailbox named Bill with no arms. I'm tired of that guy. I'm tired of that guy. It's like all my life, I look at the, I look at the mail, you look at that mailbox. Say, well, there ain't no check in there. Old Bill, and I'm rolling. Oh, man, did I just take care of you, Bill? Why you did that? Man, that dude is relentless, man. We have a good time, won't we? That's a fact of life, ain't it? Yeah. As long as you live in this life, you're going to owe somebody. That's right. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. 
There is no such thing as free lunches. There is no such thing. If you're not paying, it's somebody else's paying. But there is no such thing as free lunch. Amen. But we welcome you. We thank you for joining us in this resurrection uh, service Amen. and uh, Easter service, Amen. resurrection service. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. We're so thankful that you're here. Amen. We're glad that you're here. And we want you to pray. We want you to pray. Say, well, Pastor, I'm not praying tight. Well, start praying. Amen. Amen. Yes, you better start praying. Amen. Well, I don't live, I don't care if you're a stone cold sinner. You better pray. Amen. I guarantee Amen. you get locked up, you're going to pray. Yes, I remember when I was in the Army some, almost, ooh, about 30 years ago, I was in the Army. A long time ago. Uh, I had just gotten saved, what was that, 84? We were sitting in the child hall, and um, must have been 84, 85, somewhere. And um, we sit in the child hall, and um, I'm talking. We're talking to this guy. Come out, saying, "I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist." I looked him dead. I said, "No." I'm not. I said, "The minute you get in trouble, the first thing you're gonna do is call God." That's the first. Right. He said, "I don't know what I am, man." <laughs> yes, sir. It's easy to say you don't believe in God when there ain't no trouble, right? But let you get in some type of trouble. Yes, sir. You're going to call on somebody. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. You're going to call on somebody. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I'm so but we're glad to be here. We're thankful for Jesus. As you notice that cross behind me, that you, you notice that cross behind me? You can't see, can't you? <laughs> can you see? Yes. Can you see? 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 <laughs> Crack it up. You can't see, right? You see that? You want me to move out of the way? You see that? Yes, we see. There's a reason that cross is the way it is. Jesus is not on the cross. Yes. Right? Because that day, yes. when they went to the tomb, yes, sir. the tomb was empty. Amen. 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 Yes. And thank God. Yes, he died on the cross. But when they put him in the tomb, they took him down on the cross, and now the cross is empty. Yes, sir. Amen. And now we have an op that empty cross. Now, I could preach on the power of the empty cross. Amen. The cross is empty because we now have an opportunity because even the grave is empty. Amen? Yes. Now, I can, man, I can take that and run from here, uh, like, like, preach that like 40 going north, and 40 goes east and west. Amen? Amen. The empty cross and the empty tomb, amen, they mean something. Yes. Amen? I said they mean something. Now, that's different than having an empty bank account, man. There's power in that, too, right? <laughs> You said, Pastor, how you transition from this to that? Real easy. Because I know if I say that, that's going to get your attention. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Or being in a relationship that's empty. There's power in that too. Yes, or trying to make somebody love you when you know good and well that they don't love you. Amen. Amen. I help. Yes, sir. I, 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 did, I, did I get out the way? <laughs> Amen. And doing everything, it's all one-sided. Doing everything you can to try to convince yourself that it's good and you know good and well deep down on the inside. As you lay down and you lay your head on the pillow in the back of your mind, you know this is your joke. Amen. But well, why do I keep putting myself out here? Why do I keep sacrificing my love? Why do I keep sacrificing my body? Why do I keep sacrificing my money? Why do I keep trying to force this, this square into a round hole? Why am I trying to do this? I'm not this desperate. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to move on to my message this morning. We're going to take the offering of let or receive the offering. That's another thing that's not good to say. You don't take up an offering. You don't take an offering from people. You receive an offering. 
Amen. And um, I, maybe it was good. I forgot because I'll get ready to go somewhere. But we'll, <laughs> what was I saying, man? You're. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't laugh. Age ain't no joke. Don't laugh. Talking about relationships, that's okay. Maybe, I, maybe I, I, I need to leave that alone. But it's too many people. Oh, you cry yourself to sleep at night and all that. And you know good and well that what you got going on is not right. Oh, thank you, Spirit of God. See, that's why you need the Holy Ghost. A lot of people think the Holy Ghost is just all about speaking in tongues. That's just the initial evidence. The real the real reality of having the Holy Ghost is being able to have the power of God to live your life by the Bible. Amen. Okay? But anyway, I'm going to give you a quick relationship. I'm going to give you a quick relationship thing and then we're going to move along. The real problem in that is you not having self-worth. That's really what it is. Yes, because when you know you're not desperate, when you know you ain't got to do something, and that you have value, you have worth, and that your life represents something. You ain't got to have that. I can sit at home and watch paint dry by myself. Yes, sir. When I have self-worth, when I know my life means something, when I know that I can I can do this and that and I ain't got to have you, I can sit at home and what and paint the wall and watch it dry and don't give a hoot. No, I can do with or without you. Amen. Amen. And uh, so, you know, it's just like being married. My wife and I, we've been married 30 something years. We got four grown kids. There are times we're at home. She's doing something. I'm doing something. And I'm cool. Because it's like you just, you, she has she has value in herself. We ain't got to be all over each other 24 7. We ain't got to always be touching and doing this and that. Amen. I know she's there. She knows I'm there. And when she needs me, I'm there. When I need her, she's there. Yes, Amen? Amen. Amen. We ain't got to constantly be trying to, uh, you know, prove something and validate this and that. And we ain't validating each other by now. <laughs> and last but not least, before I move along into my message, all you men listening to me, whether it be online or in this service, if you have kids with somebody and you ain't doing what you're supposed to do, you're going to die and go to hell. You're going to answer to God unless you get that right. Amen? Amen. You got to get that thing right. The Bible said a man that don't provide for his own is worse than an infidel. In other words, a man that don't take care of his family in the eyes of God is worse than a person that don't even believe in God. Yes, sir. That's how God views you. Until you get that right, until you get that right, in the eyes of God, you are an atheist. Amen? Amen. Talk, that's Bible. Yes, that's not something I just got up this morning and got a crack attack by. That, that's not. That's Bible. So Christianity is more than putting on a nice suit of clothes, driving a nice car, strutting around the church like a proud peacock taking you to cast me out. Yes, it sir. is. Yes, sir. It's more than walking around, you know, thinking you got it all, thinking you something. Your life is supposed to back up what you say. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's right. I'm just saying. And that's how come a lot of times people come here, they don't want to be bothered with you know, you rather go somewhere where you can fly out of the radar. You rather go somewhere where you can do your thing. But you go ahead and do your thing. Amen. But I'm trying to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. The purpose for being a Christian is to let God deliver you from the past life that you had and turn you into a, a whole new person and walk a new walk and a new talk. The Bible talks about silly women going from house to house laden with sin. That's what the Bible says. It's time to, it's time to get right. Amen. It's time 
time to get your mind right. It's time to change and understand that in God, you are somebody. Amen. In God, you are, you matter. Yeah. And if you don't have to settle for anything beneath you, yeah. you don't have to be desperate. That's right. Amen. If you're breathing, if God gave you life, you're important. If God gave you life, you matter. If God gave you life, you, you, your existence is important. What am I supposed to do? Your worst enemy is someone that knows the truth and won't tell you. Amen? I've told you guys this, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to get myself ready here while I'm rambling. My wife and I told our three dogs, my name is Moana. When they got to a certain age, we bought them a promise ring. We bought each, all three of them a promise ring. One of them lost her. No, the pop, CL, the baby. She lost hers. But it still worked. The idea, the idea behind it was because we knew the world we were living in. We know the pressures that girls are under. We know the difficulties that girl face, girls face. We know that when girls are going through puberty, they are going through a tremendous emotional difficulty and, and they need validation from their fathers. Yes. Uh, and they, they, need, they need their moms and their dads. They need to be to help them work and fight through the, the, the puberty and the emotional trauma that girls go through yes. and their bodies are preparing to produce children. They need confirmation. They need somebody watching over them and caring for them and making them understand I love you, your dad. Look, this is what's happening. This is what you're dealing with. This is how a guy is going to come at you. This is what you're going to have to deal with. Yes, sir. Constantly. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. So we got up those promise rings. We got up those promise rings. We say, you keep yourself. You promise us that you're going to keep yourself until you get mad. Don't take this ring. If you're not going to do that. And by the grace of God. Yes. I said by the grace of God. Yes, but they had us. They had, my, they had myself. And when they and when they got to the point. To where they, they was getting into it with their mother. I stepped in. Amen. Because <laughs> girls get, in, get into it with their I don't care who they are. I, for some reason. I don't know what that is. But they just they, they, they remind me. You, you girls. Why do you do that? You act like your mother's dead. <laughs> so I had to step in and do my fatherhood stuff. Yes. And now that they're all grown, now that they all have husbands, now that they're, now she can't turn from. Amen. But I had to step in and do my part. And now they come back around. And now half the time I'm like, do y'all know you have a dad? They'll be talking to their mother. By, by the way, how dad? Like, how is this even working? Really? So I had to call each and I had to call each one of them to say, hey, what's going on? You, you gotta do know you have a dad, right? It's crazy. You know, life's crazy. But anyway, it's already 15 minutes till. And I don't took up all your time. I ain't got much time to preach. Say I already been preaching, right? God bless you. God bless you. Come on in. Yeah. God bless you, folks. Come on in. Come on in. Make yourself at home. Oh, that's your <laughs> You know, it was hard for me to tell. I had to take my leg. <laughs> Amen. The little time that I have left. Um, Little man, they, they got children's church going on. Yeah. Boy, look at that. I think maybe you're going to get that. <laughs> yeah. This boy, I remember, we remember him when he was just You too sitting right now. I remember when you were young, when you first came. <laughs> See, you looking like what you're talking about. You know how I know what you're talking about, Willis. You know how I know. 
Amen. But it's good to be here. We're good to see everybody. Don't make this your last time. Yeah. I'm not going to be one of these churches, one of these kind of preachers that's going to criticize you. Oh, y'all can just come on Easter. Hey, I'm thankful for the opportunity to share Christ with you. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Come back to see me. Yes. Come back to see me. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Come back to church. Yes. Amen. Not only come back to church, get in and, and, and yes. help us. We need help. Yes. Amen. I'm not even proud to say we need you. Yes. Amen. God needs you. Amen. Now, God doesn't have to have us, but he needs us. Amen. Yes, because what God does with us, he can take a snake and do it. Yes. I said what God does with us, he can take a chicken and do it. He did. Did he use a snake for, with Moses? Did he use a chicken with Peter? Sir. What God does with, with us, he can take a, a mule and do it. Did he, did he do it with David? He caused a, 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 a mule to talk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we got to be careful when we start thinking we this and that. But God needs you. Yes, the church needs you. Amen. Come on to the house of God. Get in. We need young people. Amen. Amen. Don't let the world tell you that you've got to be in the world. That you've got to be out there yeah. strutting around. That you've got to trash yourself. Amen. Don't listen to these videos. Don't listen to the movies. Don't listen to these songs. Amen. Listen to what the Bible says. Amen. Listen to what the Bible says. God, give God your life while you're young. What did David say? I was young, but now I'm old. Yes. But never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor seen bad and bread. The Bible said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Yes. Huh? Remember God yes. while you're young. Yeah. Amen. Give God the best days. Ooh. I got saved when I was 19 years old. I was 19 when I got saved. I'm 55 years old. Get ready to be 56. Amen. Yes. I've given God all of my life. Yes. Amen. Yes. I've given it all to him. Amen. And I don't regret it. We raised yes. our children in the church. Amen. We've been married in the church. Yes. Amen. I've given God yes. everything and all that I have. Yes, Amen. I can't wait yes. to one day yes. when I step on. I don't regret not one thing. I, yes, I don't regret not going to the club. Yes, I don't regret getting girls pregnant out of wedlock. I don't. I don't. I don't regret not doing drugs. I don't regret not being an alcoholic. I don't regret getting out there being a thug. I don't regret standing on the corner shaking and jiving and talking about nothing. I grew up in Bankhead Court. I grew up in the projects in Atlanta. But I thank God for those experiences because it taught me, even though we were in the project, my mother took us to church and she introduced us to God. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. One of these days, I'm going to get to this message. <laughs> I could just say, he rose from the dead. Praise God. Let's pray. Matthew chapter 27. Let me just... I won't be long. It won't be that much long. I feel like I'm already talking enough. And by now, and by now, just from the simple fact that you're here, yes. you're in this atmosphere, and I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God in this place. And I know that he's with us. And you need to know my mom, I was talking to my mom the other day. I try to call her every day, talk to her every day. And uh, she listens to the services and she looks at the, the broadcast and she told me, she said, don't forget. <laughs> She's 80 years old, so I'm listening. I'm driving along, listening on Bluetooth. She said, don't forget to tell the people that God loves them. Oh, my sweet. And I thought, okay, so I'm telling y'all, my mom told me to tell you. <laughs> And tell you that God loves you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yes, ma'am. 
You know, that's why I'm telling you, just say yes, ma'am. You don't argue. Who does that? <laughs> Who does that? Argue with your mother. Disrespect her. Who does that? I, I, I wouldn't be here if I had done that. <laughs> My mom used to get mad at me and she would, she, her eyes would cross. You know, and I'd be like, oh, I'm probably better back there. <laughs> I'm in the danger zone. She was like, what? what did I tell you? My eyes were going I was like, oh. But anyway, Matthew chapter 27. And uh, I want to preach to you this morning about four amazing events that happened at the cross. Four amazing events. That happened at the cross. Found in Matthew 27. And uh, I'm going to do my very best to keep this brief. Um, once again, we appreciate you. We thank God for you. And I hope that you have, I hope that you have experienced enough and that you enjoy the service enough to where you'll come back. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 I want to begin reading in verse 41. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. And we will believe him. I want you to think just, I want you to think for a minute before we move on. The fact that Jesus was called into question. You, you, you're in a bad place in life when you question Jesus. Are you with me? You're in a bad place in life. But moving along, he trusted in God. You criticizing him for that? He trusted in God, let him deliver him now. Cast the same. No, no, I'm not skip. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour, therefore, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Okay, you know what time of the day that is? From 12 noon to 3 o'clock in, in the afternoon. There was complete darkness. Now you know that it's from 12 to 3 that it's complete darkness. That would get your attention. I would think. I would think. All right? Yes, sir. Moving right along. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That was the first time from the eternal past, in other words, in eternal infinity, that him and the Father had never been separated. Think about it. Throughout the eternal past, up until that particular moment, him and his father had never been separated. But because of our sins, my sins, and your sins, that was the first time ever that he and the father, the father turned his back upon him because the Bible says no sin shall glory in his presence. Your sins and my sins separated Jesus. From his father. Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time? Now that you understand the devastation. Now that you understand. The, 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 the tragedy. Of what sin does. And how it ill affected even Jesus. By the simple fact that all the sins of the world. Have been placed upon his shoulder. Look at what it. Look at the damage. That sin causes. Yes. You can go down the line. Look at the damage that alcoholism causes. Look at the damage that fornication and adultery. And you go down. If you look at it, it causes some kind of problem. A 
At one time, I was just a young person that had grown up in the ghetto. At one time, my wife was just a young girl that had grown up in Brooklyn, New York, yeah. and her mother's job moved them to Phoenix, Arizona. Amen. And she had a lot of issues that she had to deal with growing up as well. And somehow God brought us together. I went into the military and she came to where they did. God orchestrated the whole thing. I don't even understand how we met. I don't even understand how God put it all together. But I'm here to tell you, God has orchestrated you to be in this service. Because so many years ago, I was in she was in Phoenix. He was in New Jersey. And somehow, God got a little steel here. And he got us here. And I'm here to tell you, the same God. Every time you hear something you don't want to, 
you don't want to hear. You want to act a fool. And you don't want to act like something. You don't want nobody telling you. You can't keep a job. You can't stay in a relationship. You can't do nothing. Because every time something gets uncomfortable, you take off and run. I'm glad for the day when I can't face the face with the fact that I was a sinner. I can't face the face with the fact that I was not right with God.
I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your hands with me right now. And I want you to just start calling on Jesus right where you are. I want you to just start calling on Jesus right where you are. I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about where you are. I want you to think about what you have been doing. I want you to think about everything. God, what has brought me to where I am? What has brought me to where I am? And why am I the way I am? And why am I involved in the things that I'm involved in? Ask yourself. And I want you to ask yourself right now. If I were to die right now, where would I spend eternity? Where would I spend eternity? Hallelujah. I want you to be honest. I may never see you again. You may never see me again. This may be the only time you ever get to hear me preach. But I want you to know that I love you. I want you to know God loves you. I want you to know this message is not a hate message. This is not a, I'm getting on you. I'm trying to get you to think. I'm trying to make you to understand that the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is all for a purpose. It's for you, and for you, and for you. And let God turn your life around. I said, let God turn your life around. Amen. Rubber Skiff, if you want to come and do that, no. Hallelujah. We're going to end the broadcast. Amen. But we're going to keep on going. Amen. Because we don't want to. And if you want to, once you get down there, if you want to just sit down off to the side. Amen. So that we can.